Hello everyone and welcome to the Red Bull Rubik's Cube World Cup Digital Qualifier number three. I'm your host, Keaton Ellis. We have an exciting event for you today. Players from around the world have spent the last two weeks using their supported digital cubes to climb the global leaderboard. The top 16 from this leaderboard have competed and we are going to be going with the top eight competing here today live on stream in a single elimination bracket with the top three players 
qualifying for the world final coming up on November 7th. A reminder that you watching can also get in on this exciting action and join the leaderboard and qualify at future events. In addition to today, there is going to be one more qualifier in two weeks. So make sure to enter for your shot at the world final. Now let's talk about today. Players will be in a single elimination bracket with the winner advancing and the loser dropping out. Each match is a best of five solves. So first to three advances. Players will solve using the same scrambles and will use all 15 seconds of inspection and start at the same time. That way you'll be able to tell who won instantly. We'll be showing both the competitors video as well as the racing app itself. So you'll be sure to get a crystal clear view of the entire solve. For those of you down in chat, you'll be able to get a lot of information by typing in the exclamation point FAQ for any questions you may have about the qualification process, especially if you think you can qualify for future events, exclamation point events for upcoming events, including the next digital qualifier and the world finals and, and exclamation point bracket, get the bracket and the list of competitors. You can also cheer for your favorite competitors down in chat. Exclamation point cheer followed by the competitor's name will give them a plus one cheer for their solves. Speaking of the bracket and these competitors now, let's go over that bracket. Right now we have the top eight already figured out in our first seed. We've got Ellie J. We've got A.L. Alfasi, Florian Truckentaner, and I'll get some help from Dana about that later. Uh, Isaac Myers, Ava Cotto. We also have Victor Kalmar, Manuel Gutmann, and Roy Tamir. So we've got an incredibly great bracket. There's some of the world's fastest solvers in this list, so I'm sure we'll see an exciting qualifier here. Finally, at the end of today's call, the winner of the qualifier. Stick around to learn more about one of your favorite players. Without further ado, I'm going to pass things off. I'm actually going to be casting this event today along with my co-caster, who I spoiled a little bit, uh, Dana Yi. So, Dana, welcome. Hey, Keaton. How's it going? Things are going great. How do you feel uh, casting today for this third qualifier? Honestly, I'm I'm really excited. You know, normally I'm on the competing end, but I'm excited to be on this end. And you know, it's it's always fun to talk to you. It's fun to commentate on solves, fun to chat, catch up, and I think it should be fun. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, it should be one heck of a set of competitions today. Indeed. These guys are are really fast. Uh, from the people that are currently in the top eight, do you have a favorite that's going to be able to make it all the way to the to the global finals and win this whole mm. qualifier? I, I think I'm personally biased from this list. I do know several of these cubers, but I personally know Ava really well, and I think it would be really cool if she could uh, push her way through. I think, honestly, um, even seeing from top 16 to top 8, there were some upsets, some unexpected um, results, so we never really know. But personally, I'm a little biased. I know Ava really well and hope she does well. How about you? Do you have any favorites? So you've got Ava. I'm going to make things interesting and go on the other bracket to make my prediction. I think uh, mm -hmm. Al Alfasi is someone who did particularly well in the last qualifier and only just barely lost to Patrick Ponce in the third place match. I think he's got a good shot here. Uh, I think this is going to be one of his best opportunities. And I think that he's going to be able to pull this upset here over Ellie and take it all the way. So I think mine's a little bit... Uh, more out there than yours in terms of, of how likely it's going to be but mm -hmm. but but i think uh, i think this would be a really interesting match um, we are starting up here with our first match of the quarterfinals lej versus al alfasi now these guys have both been in qualifiers before mm -hmm. al uh, has been a fourth placer like we talked about earlier but he also was in the first one knocked out by chris mills uh, mm -hmm. ellie did not qualify for the first one 
but was knocked out by AL actually in the last one. So that sort of leads into my prediction here, but let's take a look at this scramble right now. Is there anything mm -hmm. on it that you see that's particularly good? Ooh, got in very quickly here. Yeah. Both chose to start with white, which is a uh, pretty common. Ooh. Ooh, that looks really close. Eli, Ellie, apologies. Ellie taking it with a 69 move solution. Not bad. He looked Started. really nervous at the end there. In the yeah. bottom left, he was like kind of spooked <laughs> that he made it. That was a really slow ending to that G perm and almost let AL come back and make it. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but he does take it. Um, I'm hoping that my prediction stays true, but I also uh, am going to be impartial as a caster and try to try to give the most information that I can. Uh, Ellie is actually the first seed coming to these qualifiers. He got a 5.45 during the qualification phase which is uh, right before this qualifier there was a two-week period where 10 days of those two weeks you were able to qualify uh, you did five saws every day and then the top 16 from that make it into this so ellie got first with a 545 over i guess it's 50 saws so that's not too crazy or unheard of but still very fast and uh, no one else being able to to beat him is is very impressive <laughs> Let's see, I think this solves his orange cross looks really nice. Let's see. Oh, Ellie agreed with me. Definitely slower on that F2L mm -hmm. though. AL taking that one, bringing it up to 1-1. One, one. Pressure's on. And uh, I think both... Time. Yeah, I think both competitors are pretty nervous, pretty excited. Uh, you can see AL constantly taking the, you know, thing to dry off the sweat, the nerves. It's all coming in. Arms are sweaty, Dan. You know, <laughs> definitely in these situations, the, the pressure's on. But uh, a couple other things about Ellie. Uh, he's not just good at 3 by 3 He's, You know, he's the number one seed today, but he is really good at uh, some of the bigger cubes as well. So he's a national record holder for 5 by 5 6 by 6 and 7 by 7 in the U.K., and uh, has previously been very good at skew, so you now he's sort of going around doing the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. And you'll note that uh, obviously the entire, um, you know, qualifier is in this virtual format. So something that's been pretty new recently are these Bluetooth cubes that have come out, where it allows you to know, as you can see on the screen, see their scramble. Um, they're really cool, really up and coming. I believe the two cubes that are compatible for this qualifier are the Rubik's Connected Cube and the Go Cube Edge. I can't quite tell from their videos. Um, because they're quite small for me. But I think this technology is really interesting, and it's especially important that it's super up-and-coming and prevalent, um, you know, when we're not really supposed to go out and see a bunch of people. Yeah, the fact that we're able to, to hold an entire competition completely online and be very confident that, you know, no one is cheating or, or having some sort of unfair advantage from these digital cubes, I think, is, is a really great step and... Uh, you know, helps create these really interesting competitions that we can enjoy and watch. Mm -hmm. um, really taking that one to bring it up to 2-1. AL, on the other hand, uh, after talking about Ellie a little bit. AL is a little bit more of an old school cuber compared to, to Ellie, who started since uh, started in 2010 and was actually inspired to cube by Eric Ackersdijk, who had the world record for quite a while back in the 2007 to 2009 era, uh, and is still a very relevant cuber here today. Uh, he's his best solve ever is a 441, so he's done very close to that in competition previously and actually the last qualifier he ended up getting a five low five second single oh and it looks like he's going to take this solve right here with Pretty a 763 nice. not bad with a around 8.9 turns per second which is pretty good looks like looks he had a nice t from at the end yeah so nothing too crazy on that stat line but good consistency all around uh so, Al has taken it to a five 
solve match here against mm -hmm. Ellie. Again, the winner of this is going to be moving on. The loser in the quarterfinals does go home, but there is one more qualifier that they can be uh, a part of, which is going to be happening in two weeks. So we are uh, probably going to see both of these guys again in the future, whether or not they move on or they lose. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you just tuning in, by the way, you are watching the first of the quarterfinal matches here uh, for the Red Bull Rubik's Cube World Cup Digital Qualifier number three with LEJ versus AL Alfasi. Both of them won their first round matches and are currently going into solve five right here. White does not look very good here. Ooh, Ellie does go with red. red. And Ooh is able to cancel mm -hmm. into a T perm. Ooh. Nice. With the seven eight. That was very close. Very exciting matches. I think I always think when they get up to five solves, those are the most interesting matches because the nerves are on, everyone's excited, and like that one solve will decide the outcome. And you each have two solves behind you. Yeah, and Ellie was literally two or three moves away from finishing his T perm mm -hmm. during that. So it's not like this was a blowout. This is probably one of the closest deciders I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And AL is able to take it and advance to the semifinals, the top four, mm -hmm. where he's actually advanced once before. So he's very consistent and doing very well here. Mm -hmm. And right, uh, we said before, Ellie came in right ranking number one um i don't remember what um al's rank was but you know there, there are upsides like this you know cubing especially three by three is such a short event um anything nerves like a couple bad solves anything will sort of take you out of the mood and i think it's really easy for three by three to fluctuate based on how you're feeling how your past solves have went so unfortunately for ellie uh he did not advance even though he came in um ranking first but, you know, Keaton, what else do you think could have affected that? That first solve that they did where Ellie sort of bungled the G perm a little bit and just barely was able to finish it in time before AL made it. Mm -hmm. I think that might have, it looked like it spooked him. Like, mm -hmm. put put him out of the zone and, and got him into a, a different sort of headspace. Mm -hmm. One thing as well is uh, being one of the first matches sort of you know, makes you a little bit nervous. Yeah. You don't have as much time between the stream starting and and yourself being uh, up and present on that stage to be able to mentally prepare yourself as some of the later solvers are able to do. So, uh, and also the rankings are also based on single. So there is a little bit of fluctuation there. And if you get one lucky solve, uh, sometimes your rank might be a little inflated. Although I don't think Ellie's was. I think he mm -hmm. did very well. And I think uh, we also had a good performance from AL right there. Mm -hmm. All right, so Florian, uh, I may butcher this, apologies. Florian Trukentaner uh, takes this one with 1-0. One um, Florian actually was knocked out in the first qualifier by Bill Wang in the top eight and did not participate in the second. Um, and yeah, and then we have Isaac Myers. Do you want to? Yeah, this is Isaac's first appearance in the top 16. He did participate in the first two, but did not qualify for this online live stream qualifier. So he actually was one of the biggest upsets that we had in the first round. Uh, he was able to upset Aton Shield, who was the fifth seed, and Isaac was. Oh, we've got a 12 seed here in the top eight right now, and he overall is uh, quite a quite a well-rounded person. He's a apparently was a professional race car driver from the ages of eight to 18. Uh, and has listened to September by Earth, Wind & Fire for 24 hours straight on the first 21st of September, which that song does mention. So he's very diverse in his, his hobbies right there. Uh, we are going into solve mm -hmm. number two here. Different seems to have a pretty good start. Ooh, Florian's going to be skipping Olo right there. Mm -hmm. and go straight into PLL. So, 12.30, though. That's a little bit slower than what we were expecting from him, especially because mm -hmm. the last solve was quite nice. Mm -hmm. Right, but each solve doesn't need to be fast. You just need to be faster than your opponent. 
This is true. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of three second F2O pairs right there by Florian, mm -hmm. but he is able to pull it back with that. Oh, I'll skip into our perm. Mm -hmm. So very nice for him. The winner of this match is going to be facing Al Alfasi. So mm -hmm. I predicted Al to do very well in this tournament. He's already got that first quarterfinal win. Um, I think both these competitors are definitely going to have their, their luck cut out for them. Mm -hmm. if they've got to continue up against Al. Mm -hmm. Right, so this could be a sweep. We could see a reverse sweep. I always say these these matchups are so short, and 3x3 is such a volatile event that anything really could happen. So Florian could take this one, or we could see a comeback. I think Florian's definitely got the, the higher amount of experience here. He mm -hmm. was actually the winner of the very first ever Red Bull qualifier in Vienna back in 2018, mm -hmm. and uh, has competed actually in Boston two years ago at the highest level. As we see here, he's going off. He's gone on to OLL before Isaac's able to finish F2R right here and mm -hmm. a very clean win for him right there. Very clean solve. So 3-0 from him. Congratulations to Florian. He's going to be going on to the, those semifinals against Aol. Mm -hmm. So while we're talking about these qualifiers, we actually have someone here who has already qualified, Dana. You're going to be making it into the finals uh, <laughs> for for speed queuing. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about making it to the uh, global finals and sort of what differences there will be this year with this digital format? Right. So obviously you said, first of all, the big format is that it is digital. Um, so it, the conditions will be different. I think the nerves will be a uh, different type of nerves instead of you know, looking to your left or to your right and seeing hundreds of people, it'll be like seeing the little numbers on stream if I'm watching or probably turn it off to try and focus. I think to prepare, um, try to get used to the cubes that I'll be using in competition. And then other than that, I don't think there are ways to practice nerves, uh, given that there are no real competition, uh, at least in-person competitions for me where I live in the U.S., um, but yeah, it should be interesting. I'm really excited to see how everything goes. I love the quality of this stream, at least like watching it from here. So I'm really excited to see uh, how everything goes. I think one thing that, that might help with that is the ability to live stream and mm -hmm. sort of get that practice in while, while people are watching you. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not going to be exactly the same type of environment, of, of course, course, but, uh, you get, you get somewhat close to it. You have to set up your camera. You got to focus on those types of things. You got to answer people, but, uh, Obviously, I think performing in these types of situations is always at a different level. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I wish you the best of luck in those finals. Thank you. All right. Who do we have up next, Keaton? We have your favorite to win this whole thing, Avocado, and we also have Victor Kalmar. I like that little uh, decal he's got in the background right there. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks like that logo that's in the top right corner. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this scramble right here. Victor is going to be doing yellow, where mm -hmm. Ava is going to be doing blue. Gets a very nice OLL right there, but GC perm Ooh. is going to leave Victor the victor. <laughs> Had to make that pun once. But uh, we have seen Ava before in one of these. She did not qualify for the first live stream qualifier but was knocked out by al alfasi in the top eight so al is uh, one of the more formidable competitors here and has already beaten dana's choice to try and win at all uh, but otherwise she's also well known for being hashtag cuber where she's got a very nice big youtube channel where she posts both funny skits and her incredible solves how about how about our other competitor Dana? give us a little bit about victor Right, so hold up, my computer is. So Victor, he did not participate in the first qualifier, and unfortunately in the second qualifier, he was matched up with uh, Patrick Ponce, who you guys probably know, very fast, very well known, very consistent, very good under nerves. Uh, so unfortunately, Victor was taken out in the top eight match. Um, he's from Austria, which apparently there's a note that there are no kangaroos here. Um, <laughs> that, and... that was a note that he put... Okay, so I didn't I did not know that. That's a fun fact. There are no kangaroos in Austria, and a uh, fun fact: he is very good friends with Florian Trukentaner. I did say that just so I could 
have fun saying that name. But they're also rivals, and I think this is a common theme in the Cuban community where you sort of have rivalries, right? But I use air quotes that you guys can't see because... There's a winner and there's a loser. Uh, you you worry more about how people are doing and, and, and how good friends they are and, and mm -hmm. you care about other people. So mm -hmm. those things are very important and we are always happy to see good friends and good rivals and that, that I think is really healthy competition for people as well. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have someone that you, you like and can train with and, and can work really hard to push you even further. Mm -hmm. He is, uh, Victor is also some of ranks number one in Austria and has made podiums in multiple qualifiers. So, uh, although he did not make it to Boston in 2018. So he's very experienced here and is able to uh, to bring some of that here. But of course, Ava is the higher ranked seed and mm -hmm. uh, is able to perform under pressure as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Flo uh, not Florian, Victor is is pretty well seasoned. He's been queuing for over 10 years and his first competition was in 2011 in Budapest. Um, I also see a note that he plays football, though I'm American, so I'm not sure if this means sock our soccer or our football. I'm also not good at sports, so I don't know. <laughs> it's all right, Dana. We forgive you. We, American we football. So the one with the... You are solving Rubik's <laughs> I like playing sports. I don't know much about them. Wow. We're glad that you're able to already make it to the uh, the world finals for this. <laughs> we have we have high hopes for you there as well. Um, as long as it's not based on my knowledge of sports. Moving into this fourth solve here, Victor is actually able to take solve three. So Ellie, our first seed, was knocked out against Al Alfasi. Right now, Ava, our second seed is currently on mat, uh, about to be on match point against Victor Kalmar, who is our 10th seed. So some of these lower seeds are doing particularly well this time, as opposed to some of the previous qualifiers. So this is very exciting. And let's take a look at this scramble right here um, to see white is okay, but we need to be checking blue and green for Ava mm -hmm. as well. So I'm also not seeing a particularly great blue, although it is all right. Mm -hmm. but oh she instead goes for oh she does go for blue this time mm -hmm. yes that's a really nice looking scramble except she's got two cross Ooh. pieces messed up a little mishap there by Ava leading to Victor with the win 3-1 those types of mistakes are, are pretty big when it comes to these qualifiers mm -hmm. uh, making it you know, with every solve mattering unlike WCA official competitions uh, these Red Bull Rubik's Cube World Cup competitions, every solve matters. You don't get to drop a solve. You don't get mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, you don't get one bad mistake sort of thrown away. Every solve mm -hmm. counts. And so if you mess up, that's passing a win off to your opponent. And in this exactly. case, uh, that's exactly what happened. And this is also different because in normal competitions, you're competing with yourself, right? You want to get five of your best solves to beat your best time. But in an exciting format like this, you don't need to get a good time. You just need to beat your opponent. Right. <laughs> right. So in these types of cases, if the scramble is really bad, you mm -hmm. know that the other person's scramble is also really bad. And mm -hmm. your goal is just try to climb that mountain just a little bit faster than they can to, uh, to beat those good scram bad scrambles. We have just mm -hmm. seen Victor Kalmar make it to those semifinals over Avocado. Congratulations to Victor. We'll see him in just a second. And uh, for Ava, we hope to see you again in the fourth qualifier. Mm -hmm. uh, your solve has been very, very impressive on stream. Mm -hmm. Moving on to our last quarterfinal match here, we've got Manuel Gutmann versus Roy Tamir. Mm -hmm. Manuel, you guys have seen him previously live on stream. He has made it to the top eight twice already. This is his third time in a row. Last two times, he got knocked out by Michal Bleskovich and George Scoli, respectively. And both of those two have now made it to the World Finals and qualified. So um, I'm not sure if that says something about Manuel. He's very fast. Uh, but maybe it says something about Roy. Maybe he's going to qualify this time as well. I'm not sure. 
Right. Or maybe and... it's uh, Manuel's time to to break the mold. Mm -hmm. Right. And Roy's on the right here. On the first qualifier, he was knocked out by Giovanni Contardi in the top 16. And the second one, he was actually knocked out by Manuel um, in the top 16 final. So, you know, things are kind of coming full circle. We'll see how this match turns out. And a fun fact, he started cubing in 2013, so seven years. Yeah, he's also mainly good at FMC and is very, mm -hmm. very good there. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure exactly how much that efficiency translates over to 3x3. Three three, and I don't mm -hmm. think it translates over you know, an incredible amount. Mm -hmm. But being able to know some specialty algorithms, especially one of the biggest things for, for fewest moves that Roy is really good at is uh, being able to move just a couple of pieces at a time, mm -hmm. which is really convenient and good in environments where you have uh, just a, a corner out of your F12, for example. Being able to, to do the optimal thing in that scenario is, is really mm -hmm. helpful. And... Uh, so it doesn't look like it this one. doesn't okay, look too. like helping out there. Yeah, and I think this uh, matchup is interesting because Manuel is known for being very good at blind, which is where you memorize a cube and then put on the blindfold and solve as fast as you can. Where, uh, as Keaton mentioned, Roy is well known for FMC, which is fewest moves, where you're given like an hour to sit down and come up with the shortest solution that you can for a cube. And I think these two events require very different mindsets. Um, and so it's interesting to see how they translate into 3x3 three three with both hands. So for that, I think, yeah, this, this matchup is quite interesting. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. And it's one of the closest that we've had in terms of the votes as well. So uh, for those of you who are down in Twitch chat watching this, you guys can type a 1 or a 2. And then your vote will be able to be cast to see whether or not you think Manuel or Roy... So, let's talk a little bit about some of these um, things that have been changing with cubing because of the, the coronavirus, because of the fact that we have to stay at home so much. Mm -hmm. We obviously have this right here, which is this completely online qualifier, but what do you think the future is going to look like now that we have these digital cubes, now that we're starting to develop this uh, infrastructure so that we can hold these online competitions with high confidence. Uh, do you think that's going to change things at all in terms of cubing? Right. So the the fact of cubing going back to normal, I think that's a bigger question of whether the world itself is sort of going to go back to normal. And I don't think I don't want to deviate too much, but I think it'll be a long time before people are comfortable getting into groups of big people. And obviously, this innovation of um, Bluetooth cubes is really, really awesome um future competitions i think successfully could happen online uh like this format is super exciting super interesting although due to the fact that it is virtual right the thing that i miss is being able to see someone sit down chat you know get food things like that um so in the, in the meanwhile i think it's a very good alternative and in fact even if things go back to normal i think it's also a very good option um but for me personally i love seeing people in person so given the option I believe I would try to go to more competitions if possible. What about you, Keaton? Yeah, I I mean, I agree. I think that it's really good to have this type of innovation in the scene. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, being able to, to sort of take a break from a lot of the work that's done with, with the WCA mm -hmm. and have a lot of these people be able to do things outside of that format and experiment a lot. I think the head-to-head -head format here is very exciting but mm -hmm. uh, we previously have done the cubing at home home streams and you've been on and competed a couple of those and i've been host and broadcaster mm -hmm. for some of those and being able to to just experiment with different formats and, and sort of have some hybrid between the wca competition model where everyone competes and this mm -hmm. very exciting spectator format is is going to be something that i think we should be continuing to work on in the future as we see mm -hmm. roy here take solve number three so it's not a clean sweep roy's going to be using the go cube where manuel in this case is using the rubik's connected so we got a good mm -hmm. case of each competitor using a different cube I you think have the go cube looks really nice when it lights up <laughs> just random side comment yeah it is very aesthetically pleasing mm -hmm. it is uh but 
the the cubes themselves have some differences, right? Mm -hmm. The the Go cube is very rounded on the the corners, whereas the Rubik's Connected looks a lot like your standard Rubik's cube. Mm -hmm. The the magnets on it, I'm I've always been sort of I've been playing with it quite a bit. The Rubik's Connected for for the better part of uh, over a month now. Those have strong magnets in it. Have you been playing with yours a lot, Dana? Yeah, I have. Uh, not so much recently. In general, I haven't been cubing it as much due to school, but I have, and the magnets indeed are very strong. Uh, I find that I can't do super long sessions because my um, hands start to hurt after a while. Although, in general, I don't know, maybe I'm getting old. My hands just start to hurt after cubing for like an hour now. But it's a, it's a really nice cube. I have been playing with it a lot. Um, and I think as it, uh, like a like a technology-enabled Bluetooth cube, it's, it's really good. Yeah, I've been I've been very pleasantly surprised by by how good it, it's been and how well mm -hmm. it turns. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's it's definitely a step in the right direction. Right, and I think it's interesting that these cubes are becoming more cubes with a Bluetooth functionality instead of like a Bluetooth cube that also turns. Right, um, and that like leads to the fact that they're much higher quality than I don't know maybe two years ago I would have expected a cube with the Bluetooth capabilities to be. Yeah, I mean. It, things have pro uh, progressed very quickly. But mm -hmm. we have just seen the uh, final quarterfinal match finish up. Manuel Gutmann takes it three to one. So he's able to mm -hmm. make it past that top eight block that he's had for the last two. And we now have our semi-final matchups. On the top side, we've got A.L. Alfasi versus... Eli J. No, no it's, it's Florian. What? Oh, my page did not refresh. <laughs> And, uh, you know, being in the virtual format, we face technical difficulties. So, against Florian Trugentaner. Yes, I needed your help there saying that name. Gotcha. On the bottom side, we've got Victor Kalmar and, of course, Manuel Grootman. Mm -hmm. Only three of these people are going to be able to make it to the top World Finals disqualifier. And one of them is going to be going home. So They're this technically is already be... home, but you know what we mean. Yes, all of them are currently home, uh, but they will be needing to stay at home and qualify at a future time. Indeed. <laughs> Speaking of these qualifiers, you're going to be able to qualify for this fourth digital qualifier starting tomorrow, and that'll be going on for a 10-day period before qualification times end, and we prepare for the fourth qualifier. So... Make sure you've got your Rubik's Connected and or GoCube Edge ready to go for tomorrow's digital qualifiers starting. Speaking of starting, though, we've got this matching it with Al and Florian right here. Al is the one that I thought might win it all, but Florian is definitely one of the fastest solvers and, of course, is Austria's fastest solver. So... Mm -hmm. Both of these guys are relatively close in speed, and I think this is going to be one of the closest matches we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. But the big thing is to make it into the finals. If you win your court, your semifinal match, you are guaranteed the global finals, regardless of whether or not you win or you lose in the finals. Obviously, it's nice to be the number one winner, but at the end of the day, these guys really, really care about that global finals and, and trying to be able to, to do well there. Mm. Looks like Ellie is the favorite based on the poll. Let's take a look at this scramble, Dana. I got that nice red and blue edge connected up to that uh, red and white. But it doesn't look like that corner uh, it doesn't mm -hmm. look like the other edge looks very nice both solvers are doing both white here white. Mm -hmm. g perm by florian Ooh. Ooh. they all seem to get a little tripped up on the e perm but took it with an 11 and again right so we we can expect to see faster solves from solvers but again you don't need to be super fast you just need to beat the other person and in this case al did take it it looks like there might have been a desync as well. So mm. we previously talked about things that competitors need to be focusing on in order to try and you know, avoid sort of rule breaking, either on purpose or on accident. 
Some mm -hmm. of these include making sure that you don't turn the cube too early and making sure that you don't pop. But another one is make sure that um, your cube hardware is good and that your cube is very charged, which is a very strange <laughs> sentence to me. As someone right. who's been cubing for a very long time, saying the sentence, I need to charge my cube is very new to me. But mm -hmm. uh, Florian might have experienced a little bit of that right there. If your cube is not at full or close to full charge, um, occasionally it might desync on one or two moves. Mm -hmm. And that difference might might cost you the solve right there. So, mm -hmm. so Florian's got it resynced up, uh, and hopefully he doesn't have any of those uh, throughout the rest of this tournament. Let's take a look at this scramble. Green has a an edge piece in place. I'm looking at red right now. Red is my number one, but I believe both mm. of these solvers are white only in this case. Mm. I don't like white. It might be white yellow. Oh, I did not like the look of that white cross. Yeah, it looked a little messy. Seems to be close here. Ooh, AL getting on PLL. Oh! Orange's able to take it though. Mm hmm. He had a Z perm though, which, yeah. is, which is one of the worst. Um, not one of the worst, but but definitely the worst peel out with all corner solve. Mm -hmm. So it, it takes quite a while right there. Mm -hmm. but it was I will say, I believe in that one, AL got to the last step, which is PLL a little faster than Florian, but Florian was able to execute faster and thus take that solve. So now we're up to 1-1. One, one. The poll seems a little bit more even instead of a completely skewed towards one side. So this should be interesting. We're on our third solve now. Al is the favorite to win mm -hmm. from the chat voting, but I'm not so I'm not so sure. Florian definitely had that first solve in the bag if it weren't for the desync, mm -hmm. and it was close on that last one. But but he did did win mm -hmm. uh, and was able to make better use. Remember we were talking about you know both people get the same scramble and it was mm -hmm. really bad in that case. So. Yeah. He was able to make better use of the bad scrambles. It doesn't look like white is as bad here. Mm -hmm. So let's check out what they're going to be doing. Oh, Al looks like he's going through real fast. Oh, he's going to get a skip if he does the right. He is. Uh, yes. Oh, both good solves, but Al taking that one very smooth. I think this is the fastest solve the the digital qualifier so far. A seven point oh uh, one one a seven eleven. Yeah, look at that. O-L-L -L time. Yeah. Skipping that PLL, making sure that he gets that good skip in. And I think just trying to observe them visually, I think AL might be a little bit more nervous. He seems a little more... Uh, I, c I can't think of a word right now, but, you know, he's drying off his hands, drying off the sweat. Definitely happens when you get nervous. He's smiling a lot, too, mm -hmm. which... Might be might might help calm him down actually. Like physically, the act of smiling releases uh, release serotonin to try and help you sort of calm down a little bit. But I think both of them are are very experienced cubers. I mean, Florian is literally the fastest cuber in Austria, and Aol is one of the fastest cubers in Israel, and uh, had a five year Israel champion streak. So Ben Barron, who's already qualified, has has since taken that away from him. But Al is very used to competing at the top level. Mm -hmm. Green looks like a really nice cross here. So if only these guys were color neutral, but otherwise it looks like Al is doing very well. Ooh. But Florian with the V perm. Ooh, he won with the V perm. Yeah. Was he using the the new out? Uh, I actually could not catch it. <laughs> not too sure. Mm-hmm. That's some of the, the some people have switched to. I don't think it's any faster. I just think it's more consistent. And so mm -hmm. consistency is really key in these as well. Um, mm -hmm. You don't want to be accidentally messing something up and and uh, having a loss be due to you know an error that you made during your own solve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it seems like Florian might be listening to music. Sometimes I find that helps me get in the zone. Uh, so AL seems to be trying to take it more like smiling, trying to get in the mood. And Florian might just be listening to music to get himself pumped up. I've actually had that uh, same type of feeling when I'm when I'm doing mm -hmm. online solving, sort of sitting at my mm -hmm. desk. If I'm listening to, to music, it helps the, the focus by mm -hmm. um, just sort of 
letting me mellow out a lot of the background and just focus on what's going on right now. We're going on the fifth solve, though. These guys need to win this in order to make it to the mm -hmm. finals and guarantee it their spot in close. the qualifiers. Ooh. It's close. Oh, oh, Florian takes that one very close. Wow. I was trying to watch them side by side, and they look like they were both like at the same step at the same time, and then Florian just edges it out. Yeah, Florian had GC there as well. So mm. my, my prediction made it only one round past yours, but mm. Florian with that GC permit at the end, look how long that took him. It took him oh. 2.3 seconds in order to get that thing done. So big congratulations to him for making it onto the finals and guaranteeing him a spot in the global finals. Mm -hmm. Of course, AL is not out yet. There is still a third place match. He's familiar with, he lost to Patrick Ponce last time. But there's no Patrick this time, so we are going to be seeing him again very shortly before we move on to our next semi-final match. Dana, we've got a giveaway Ooh, that spicy. we're going to be doing. If you guys purchase Rubik's Connected or GoCube Edges and use those to qualify, you may be able to uh, be eligible for a... Uh, giveaway package that Rubik's has been doing. Mm -hmm. There is one that he won. Uh, Daryl Clark is the winner for our third qualifier here. He placed 278th on the leaderboard uh, from the United States with a best solve time of 30.12 seconds. Congratulations 30, to Daryl Clark. Oh, my bad. 34.89 seconds. I need yeah. to make sure that I read my correct numbers. <laughs> and what does the prize pack include, Gaten? The prize pack includes a Rubik's keychain, a Rubik's edge, which is a floppy cube that has a couple of extra turns built into it. So it's not just your standard floppy cube. A Rubik's mini two by two, a Rubik's cube, a Rubik's master four by four, and uh, the Rubik's professor five by five. I think this is gonna be the most interesting one to people, the new Rubik's speed cube. So Ooh. this is one that is just coming out. And so they're gonna be able to get a nice sneak peek at that and the new 40th anniversary metallic cube, which is actually very heavy uh, <laughs> and like very well built. Mm -hmm. There's also gonna be another giveaway for this fourth qualifier coming up in two weeks. So make sure you guys get your names on the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. All right. But, so who do we have up here? We've got Victor Emmanuel Gutmann going at it for this final spot. Solve number one is happening right now. Victor does a sledge there to get a nicer PLL Ooh. or nicer OLL, but he had to sledge to avoid the dot case and got a GC perm. And Manuel was able to edge him out because of that. So mm -hmm. a little bit of bad luck on Victor's part. It's fairly close with mm -hmm. 50 to 50. And I think from top 16 to top 8, Victor and Manuel 3-0. And for top 8 to get into the, the live stream here, they both won against their opponents 3-1. to one. So that's pretty interesting. Again, just adding to the fact that it's a relatively equal matchup. Yeah, I mean, Victor was able to beat Ava. So that's that's one mm -hmm. thing in his favor, but... But everyone's very close at this level, so so don't take that. Mm -hmm. you know. He's actually, I think, one of the more emotional solvers here. Not in like a bad mm -hmm. way, um, but he really rides when he's doing well. He really sort of gets into this groove. When he was playing against mm -hmm. Patrick Ponce in the last qualifier, he actually took the first solve off of Patrick, mm -hmm. which our casters and most people were actually very surprised by because Patrick mm -hmm. was one of the odds-on favorites. Um, he was pumped. He was fist pumping. He was, you know... To pull lingo from uh, some video game communities, he was popping off like he was. <laughs> he was very excited. I've never so. heard that used before. So I'm I'm certain that um, you know, he must have felt very excited. 
there and mm -hmm. he needs to make sure that he stays focused and composed for this. He's got a 3-2 reverse sweep if he wants to make it into the finals, but of course, there is the third place match. He's not mm -hmm. completely out yet. The poll seems to be skewing towards Manuel now that he has a 2-0 up in his favor. Let's see, Keaton, what do we think about this solve? I'm looking at it right now. Manuel's got red. Make sure you take a look at red. Mm -hmm. And that looks actually very nice. So yeah. that that's not Ooh. looking in Victor's favor, but mm -hmm. uh, he is able, Victor's able to save a pair right there. So that's doing well for him. And uh, very clean solve Ooh, onto yes. him right now. And I believe uh, Manuel had a little mishap there. So pretty clear win for Victor there. Yeah, that's, Could this that's be definitely... the start of a reverse sweep? We'll see. I'm not so sure about that, but it is uh, definitely good for him to not get eliminated immediately, take of a second, course. recompose himself, and make sure that mm -hmm. he's focused for these last two solves. Mm -hmm. We have three seconds here until this last one, mm -hmm. or next one. I don't think this will be the last one. But if you guys are just tuning in, coming to watch our digital qualifier number three, you are currently in the semifinals, watching Victor Kamar versus Manuel Gutmann. These guys are some of the faster solvers, and Victor actually had to beat Avocado, the number two seed, to make it into this semifinals. So he's down two to one right now against Manuel, and we've got a close match. The other semifinal, Al Alfasi versus Florian. Oh, sorry, Quickentaner. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> um, I had Florian winning it just barely, eking out the victory against Al. So Al is going to be going down to that third place match. That we'll see the loser of Manuel versus Victor on very shortly. But we've got one more qualifier, Dana. Yeah, and uh, it's starting tomorrow, right? You've got 10 days starting tomorrow, Sunday, September 27th, to use one of your supported uh, digital cubes, either the Rubik's Connected or the GoCube Edge, to go on to the Rubik's Connected app and try and qualify for this digital qualifier number four that's happening in exactly two weeks from today. Right. Seems to be back. I believe we ran into some technical issues. And uh, as I mentioned before, that's another new introduction in the virtual format. You know, in a real competition, the most technical thing is like, where's the solver? Go find them. Whereas, uh, you know, if your internet is down, if your cube disconnects, if it powers off. Right. We got a, a lot more moving parts here to, to host these digital competitions. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think for the most part, um, things have been very, very smooth today. And mm -hmm. overall, throughout the, the last couple of... Um, Last couple of competitions that we've held and every single one i think gets better than the previous one with, with extra experience and, and learning a lot more which i think is really good for the cubing community in general mm -hmm. uh, both being able to host online competitions during this time and also for future competitions at big events and mm -hmm. i think this is a really, really nice good white cross. Whites, yeah. white cross yeah I, I think that's a block potentially Ooh, victor has hundred yeah, percent of oh the pull right now. Yeah. Yeah. He made best use of that block right there. The block was on green right. orange. And we're gonna bring it tied up to two two. That block was green, white, and orange, which meant mm -hmm. that Manuel could not do it because he's red only, so that, that yeah. doesn't help him at all. One of the biggest reasons that you should be dual color neutral, by the way. If you only solve a one cross, if anything is really nice on the opposite, mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to take advantage of it at uh, take advantage of it at all. Mm -hmm. So right, and to elaborate, uh, cross color here means like the first step in um, solving Rubik's cube. Obviously, there are six sides, and I think due to the tutorials online, most people tend to be white only, white yellow only, or green blue only. And I think it's super beneficial to be able to solve on multiple colors, so you can take advantage of really good scrambles. And if something is really bad for one solve, you can do another side. Right. Huh. Dana, do you, how many colors do you solve? I solve six. This is actually a relatively new development for me. I think uh, 
when I started, almost everyone was white yellow. So I was white yellow for probably eight, nine years. And then a couple years ago, a couple really fast people switched over. Uh, most notably, I think Patrick switched when he was averaging around seven seconds. I was like, you know what? I should do that. So now I'm up to six colors and that's, you know, the maximum number of colors I can do now. All right. We've got this last solve right here. Victor is able to preserve what it looks like as a, uh, a, a nice X cross, but Ooh. Definitely took a little bit of time off of that, yeah. and Manuel's able to make it. Very close there. I think that that again was off by only a couple moves. Victor definitely not happy with that. Manuel excited to get clutch that solve. That's what we would call a pop off, Dana. Mm -hmm. That okay. was really excited clapping I've, a let's go, or maybe I've a vamos. More sayings uh, to my hard. repertoire. And uh, so Manuel popped off. <laughs> Congratulations to him. We've got two of our three finalists made here today. Florian mm -hmm. and Manuel have made it to the global finals. And of course, you will see them in just a minute in the finals. We've got one more to decide, and that mm -hmm. is going to be our third place match that is coming up, Eyal versus Victor. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts about this one? I'm not too sure. Again, in the semifinals, both of the matches were super exciting. They ended 2-3. Um... I think based on what we've seen before, AL might edge it out, but we shall see. Do you have a do you have a pick based on what we've seen or just what you know? Well, I think these these guys have both battled pretty hard to get here. Like mm -hmm. AL had to beat Ellie, who was the number one seed, and Victor had to beat Ava, who was the number two seed. So mm -hmm. they both have done pretty well today. They've been solving relatively well. They did get a little bit unlucky on their fifth solve and their semifinal matches, so I think it's going to be very close. I don't think mm -hmm. there's going to be a real easy winner here. Mm -hmm. um, but AL's been in this position before and he lost. Um, maybe he'll be able to, to sort of hold the ship and, and continue on for this, this final one. But, mm -hmm. you know, Victor has done very well. He beat Ava. He's taken solves off of Patrick Ponce mm -hmm. um, in, in pretty clutch matches so i think both of these guys are are going to be very very close and i don't think mm -hmm. it's going to be super easy to call mm -hmm. but victor just got out of a match and is about to do more solves so he could either be sort of still feeling a little bit of emotions from that or you know still be warmed up while he has to sort of rewarm himself up for this mm -hmm. I, I like that match relatively speaking it leads for a more exciting output. And it's more exciting when you can't say like, oh, obviously so-and-so is going to win. We got a thumbs up right there from Victor. Nice. Looks like both of these competitors are going to be scrambling here. That's this is the biggest up. match of the day for me. In my mm -hmm. opinion, every other match is sort of, you know, there's always something on the line, but there's still <laughs> another one. Mm -hmm. you know, here, you are the closest you can possibly get. Mm -hmm. If you win here, everything that you've done up until this point is is worth it because you just made it into the finals. And if you lose, mm -hmm. you have to go through that entire gauntlet again. You've got to get mm -hmm. back here. you got to make sure that you, uh, you know, qualify, make yourself a good spot in the, the qualifier, and then mm -hmm. go ahead and win three best of five matches. So mm -hmm. Ale takes this first one here. Mm -hmm. Got to be feeling pretty good about himself, yeah. but that 2.4 second PLO definitely needs to be improved a little bit. And if he, if he wants to guarantee himself a spot in these finals. Mm. And I, uh, I think this match is even more high stakes than first versus second because since I already know the finals, uh, this match is going to be do they or do they not have a spot, which is, I think there's more pressure here. Definitely more pressure. Right. Right. I agree. And if they win here, they're going to be joining a bunch of other competitors who've already made it in. So mm -hmm. we've talked about uh, our two that have made it today, Florian and Manuel. But in addition to those guys, we've got from the second qualifier, Patrick Ponce, George Scully, and Michal Pleskovic, three incredibly fast solves.